Nice. Procedural texture part four, I think, at this point. Who knows? All right, so we've added sort of scratches to the outside of this. Let's imagine that we want some dirt in here. So the first thing we want to do is make some kind of dirt node. Uh, and I'm just going to temporarily apply this uh, over here because I can. Um, I just like seeing what the material looks like, so I'll just make another AI standard surface. Call this filth because uh, I'm spazzy and it is 9 o'clock and I'm recording videos. So make that some kind of dirty brownish color. That's not dirty brownish at all. Um, great. So that looks terrible. It's disgusting and it should be. I don't just make that really rough and let's just see how disgusting that looks. I have no confidence that this will look at all decent. Ooh, that looks dirty. Great. I was mostly just shooting for I would like contrast between this and the purple. And I think we've achieved that. So, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so what we're going to do now is go back into our hyperchain. And basically, we want to take this dirt and apply it to the inside of these little curvy, curvy areas where we have them. Um, and we want to do that and still have this show up. So the way you do that is make another mix shader and basically map your original one into the new one. Procedural texturing is basically mix shaders mi uh, mapped into mix shaders into mix shaders into mix shaders. It's a whole thing. Um, I've had, I think I've done like seven mix shaders deep where I just had like a mix shader and a mix shader and a mix shader seven times. It was insane. Um, so what I'm going to do just to make things a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to hit this little clean button and that is going to, uh, I apologize for the audio quality by the way, I don't know, my mic is being really gross today. Um, I'm going to hit this little clean button, it's just going to remove everything from here. It's not deleting it, it's just getting it out of my viewport so I have something clean to work with. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this again. So I'm going to hit tab and do mix. Uh, and by the way, you can, if you right click on an object and do assign new material, um, you can find the mix shader there as well. I just like doing it here. I'm going to do mix shader. I'll do mix, dirt, and scratch. And I just sort of kind of, again, like labeling exactly what it's doing in this particular mix shader. It just helps me keep myself organized or else I go insane. Um, so in this case, we have our fill texture. I'm going to grab fill and put that in shader two. And if you mess up the order, I do this every single time I do a, uh, do a mix shader. You can just swap them. It's no huge deal. And I'll grab this mixed corner scratch and I will put that in shader one. Uh, so if we look at that, it should be pretty ugly looking. Honestly, I don't expect this to look super great. Uh, yes, I should assign the new material. That would be helpful. Um, <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm just like, which, what am I doing? Um, so you can see that's gotten a little bit darker. It's not, it doesn't really look like anything. Again, if we, if we grab this and we play with the mix way, you can see here's our original uh, shader one, and here's the filth texture that we made. Um, but we need, again, a, a something more refined to control this. And in this case, we actually have the, that weird little curvature we did before. Um, so you can do one of two things. You could set up a new curvature node if you just want to define, you know, different, different values. Um, Basically, you should just be able to go and do AI and just make another one of these. Um, I do recommend naming these something more logical, so they're, you know, I don't know, if you're texturing a particular object, call this, like, sphere corner scratch curve or something, like, more descriptive than just AI curvature, too. Um, and you could just map in the color of this the same way you did previously, uh, but in this case, that's not what we want. So what I'm going to do is go into my textures tab. And you can see we have the AI curvature one. So what I'm going to do is just grab this and I'll throw it in my mix weight. Uh, and you notice when I do that, it's like, it pops up this little window here. Um, basically what this is, if you remember, uh, it doesn't, it won't take the whole output because it has the R, G, and the B value. And this mix weight only wants R or G or B. It will not take all of them. So if this ever pops up, basically all you need to do is hit the little checkbox next to this out color and select whatever node you want and just click on mix. At that point it should hook it up. You'll notice the second I click on mix, if you look down here, uh, when I click on that it's going to hook it up automatically. Um, if you need to switch a value you can just do color R and then click on mix again. It'll unhook out color G. Um, honestly I barely ever use that. I find it not counterintuitive but from working in here I feel like the visual is just sort of helpful. Um, so again, I'll start this render again, and you can see it's actually gone through and seems like added grime on top of what we had before. 
Um, so if we're looking at this, we've done the R already. This is the, the sort of outer scratches. We want to actually be using G. So I'm going to grab G and put that in there. Um, I'll turn that off. And you can kind of see that now we have like a little bit of disgusting grime sort of on the inside of this that wasn't there previously. And that's basically kind of all you want to do for procedural texturing. Um, in this case, I'm not a huge fan of the way that this is working. So you can do some different things with this um, to sort of refine this. You can do one of two things. A, either just create a new node if you need something super different, or you can map it through other nodes before putting it into the dirt mixture here. Um, so what I'm basically, I want more grime in here is what I'm shooting for. It's like my end, end goal is more dirt. Um, so I'm just going to temporarily unhook this and I'm going to go ahead and there's two different ways to do this. Um, the first one is if you look up AI color, uh, look up AI color correct. Put that in here, and basically what you're going to do is just map in the, the G, wait, oops, aha, um, you can actually just map in the whole out color, it seems like, um, and then just grab out color, and again, you want this to be G because you're working specifically with this little G value, pop that into your mix. So off the bat, this shouldn't really do anything. Um, it should just kind of leave your image the way it is. But what this does, it sort of acts like a filter in Photoshop almost, where you can go in and, you know, mess with the different settings of these values. Um, so in this case, I'm actually curious what happens if I unhook the R and the G and the B and, like, what happens. Actually, I kind of don't care about the blue, but... Okay, cool. So that actually makes it life easier. So I just hooked up... Uh, Instead of hooking up RGNB, I just hooked up G because it's the only thing I care about for this particular one. Just a little bit easier to look at. Um, so you can mess with the, the sort of gamma of things. You can mess with Q shift if you want. Um, and you can play with like saturation and contrast. Um, so contrast is kind of good for sometimes getting like a little bit harder lines of stuff. That should be probably pretty dirty. And you can play with like exposure um, and just kind of mess with this until you get an effect that you like. In this case, I'm actually very curious what that looks like. Ooh, yes, much dirt. Um, so you can see just by using this node, you do get a little bit more control over the curvature itself. Um, it's really good for isolating specific areas, but sometimes it's not great at getting, you know, the, the amount of grime or something like that that you need. Um, so using this color crack will sort of help push that a little bit farther. Um, so that's you know, one way to do things. Uh, I will show you a sort of weird alternative way on the previous shader that we did for the edges. Uh, so there's different ways to access that edge corner thingamadoodle. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually just sort of expand this whole node. Um, to do that, basically, if you come up here and you just sort of click this little button with the arrows, it's going to show you everything that's connected in here. It has the potential to get kind of messy. Um, so it is, again, important to keep your stuff organized when you're, when you're looking at things. Um, but it's going to show you basically everything that's attached into this node, and it's done a very bad job of ordering these. Um, so you can see we have the, the curvature node, and let me just uh, make that bigger. All right. So, all right, so we have our original two shaders, the orange and the green, that's being piped into the mix node, and then the mix node is being piped into the second mix node with the fill layer that we've made. And you'll notice this AI curvature is being ah, is being used in both of these. So it's being used for the mix in this guy, being piped in the color correct, and being used for the mix in this one. Um, so if you're ever curious what kind of crazy setups you guys have made, you can go in and sort of expand things this way. Um, it's also potentially a convenient way to rehook stuff up uh, if you ever need to. So in this case what I'm going to do is, again, I'll show you a different way to control the AI curvature node for this particular mix. And instead of using an AI color correct, uh, I am actually just going to use a standard ramp texture. Um, so this one, if you hit that in, um, it'll, you can actually, I don't really need to look at this place duty texture node um, for now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and hit the minus button. I don't really want that displayed. And I'm just gonna grab my R value, or, or, Ah, uh, yes, this one's weird. 
Okay, so our value, throw it into the U chord or the V chord, it doesn't really matter. I think I usually put this in V by default um, for one reason and one reason only, and that is pretty much the, the V ramp gets set to V ramp, and if I put it in V chord, I don't need to switch this to U ramp. Um, it doesn't really matter. If you put it in U, it does the exact same thing, you just need to switch this to U ramp. Um, so it's gonna, what this is gonna do is more or less allow you to sort of control this almost like you would a level slider in Photoshop. The only downside I've found to using this particular method is that it seems like this little preview only works with AI shaders and or nodes. This is just default Maya texture, so you can't actually see it in this view. This has been my experience in pretty much anything I've done with. But it does work, and sometimes sometimes I get angry with the color correct, like not doing what I want. Um, so I will just sort of suck it up and use a ramp node. Um, but what I'm going to do, so again, we can't really look at this uh, like we did traditionally with the, the shader. Um, so I'm just going to go back into my, my regular mode and look at the sort of final outcome of this. Um, and you should be able, like, as you play with the ramp, you should be able to kind of mess... Oops, I set this to V-Ramp. <laughs> Alright, so if you set that to a V-Ramp, um, you should be able to kind of go through and control... That might be a little bit hard to see, but you can see, like, as I push that... As I push this white farther down, it's doing kind of the similar thing, and it's basically adding a little bit more uh, sort of chrome around the edges of this. Um, and you can do some very, very bizarre effects with this if you ever wanted to. So, like, you could, you know, if you ever need to find control over it for whatever reason, um, and this might, I might not be able to actually show it super well in here, um, but what you can do is basically make some, like, really weird striations in this by adding extra different color ramps, and you can do extra values of gray. So you get a little bit more control over, like, the specific levels of how this is mapping in if you need that. Um, the trade-off for that is, again, you can't use this this tool here, which is... And now it's letting me use that. It is annoying. Um, <laughs> trying to make a point, Maya. Dang it. Um, Alright. But sometimes, like, this is not going to work. Why it's working now, I honestly don't know. But anyway. Um, so that's the two ways that I sort of go through, usually, and, like, mess with the curvature to get more of the look that I'm looking for. So if we go out and we just sort of look at where we are with the, the different mushrooms and stuff like that, um, so you can see what we have is basically more or less purple mushroom, some little chromey bits on the outside, and it's gone through and it's also sort of shaded the inside to be darker. Um, and it's also gone and done a nice job down here and also making that a little bit sort of dark and, and warm. Um, so this is the basics of the AI curvature node. I will show you how to make this even fancier in the next version of this. Um, I don't know. I really like procedural texturing. I think it's super fun. Um, hopefully this makes sense so far. If it doesn't, I would recommend going through and just, like, setting this up maybe once or twice or, like, playing with it a little bit. Um, if you're in my class, you know, email me, whatever, ask me for questions. Um, because going forward, I'm just gonna kind of assume that you guys sort of know how to do this, and I'll sort of build on these with more mix nodes. Woo-ha-ha! -ha. But yeah, for another video.